As you can see, the underlying theme of today's conference is improving safety in orthopedic surgery, sports medicine, and neurosurgery. And as a hand, wrist, and elbow specialist, um, nerve injuries of the elbow have been an interest of mine because the injuries in the elbow to the nerves cause downstream effects in the hand that can be pretty devastating. And so it became an interest of mine to figure out how can we decrease these injuries. So when we talk about nerve injuries in the elbow, there are two sort of flavors or varieties. There are iatrogenic injuries, which are procedure-related or surgically uh, induced injuries. And we're going to talk about two specific cases, nerve injuries in Tommy John surgery, which is a very commonly performed uh, surgery in the elbow now in overhead athletes, as well as nerve injuries during elbow arthroscopy. And we're going to talk about traumatic injuries, so nerve injuries related to contusions, fractures, dislocations, and lacerations in the elbow. So a brief review of the nerve anatomy in the elbow. So there are three important nerves in the elbow and a lot of sort of uh, less important branches. But on the inside of the elbow, on the medial aspect of the elbow, below the medial epicondyle, we have the ulnar nerve. That's an important nerve that gives us feeling to the ulnar one and a half fingers of the hand and controls the intrinsic muscles and some other muscles in the fingers. We have the radial nerve, which is another important mixed motor sensory nerve on the anterior and lateral aspect of the elbow, and it controls feeling to the dorsal half of the thumb and index finger in the hand, as well as the muscles that extend the wrist and fingers. And then we have the median nerve, the nerve that's compressed in carpal tunnel. That's on the anterior aspect of the elbow, controls the sensation of the palmar aspect of the thumb, index, middle, and ring finger, and also many of the finger and wrist flexors and the, the muscles that oppose the thumb. So injuries to any of these nerves can be devastating. And many of these nerves in the elbow are subcutaneous or very close to bones, joints, ligaments, making these nerves susceptible to injuries during fractures, dislocations, lacerations, and surgical procedures. And how do we prevent the devastating effects of these uh, potential injuries? Well, first let's, let's talk about the possible iatrogenic injuries. So an interest of mine has been, what happens to the hand after Tommy John surgery? So Tommy John surgery is a, a very commonly performed procedure today. It is a procedure performed on overhead athletes such as pitchers, javelin throwers, football quarterbacks, or even weekend warriors where they tear the stabilizing ligaments on the inside of the elbow, the ulnar collateral ligament complex. And described in 1986 by Do Dr. Frank Job, it's been a revolutionary procedure to reconstruct this ligament to allow athletes to get back to a high level of function. But the incidence of both the diagnosis of this procedure and the performance of this, or the diagnosis of this um, injury and the performance of this procedure has exploded. And what, what are the consequences uh, of this increasingly performed procedure? Well, we did a study um, that we published a couple of years ago in the American Journal of Sports Medicine. And we wanted to see what's happening with Tommy John surgery. So we've, we looked at a 10 year period of Tommy John surgeries performed in New York State from 2002 to 2011. And we found over 10 years, a three times increase in the incidence of the procedure with over a 200% increase in volume. And interestingly, if you look at this graph, there was an explosion of this procedure in teenagers, in uh, patients 17 to, to 20. Um, and at the same time as of this procedure, there's controversy what to do with the ulnar nerve, that nerve on the inside of the elbow. Do we leave it where it is or do we move it out of harm's way, a procedure that many of you have seen called an ulnar nerve transposition. Well, in the same series, there was a 400% increase in the rate of concomitant ulnar nerve transposition at the time of Tommy John surgery. So, um, and you can see that in this graph. So what effect does that have on the, the nerve and the effects in the hand of the ulnar nerve? So we actually did um, an influential study that we just published this past year, also in the American Journal of Sports Medicine, we wanted to look at what's the risk of ulnar nerve complications related to Tommy John surgery. In the press, and if you talk to your friends, you'll hear stories of, oh, my, my son has an elbow ulnar collateral ligament tear, we're going to get Tommy John surgery, he'll be back to better than before. But is that really true? Are there risks that we're not aware of with this surgery? So we looked at over 1,500 cases performed since 1986 in the U.S., performed at some of the by some of the leading sports surgeons in the country. And at an average follow-up of three years, we found that over that 12% of patients had an ulnar nerve complication related to Tommy John. 
that's not so great. That's one in nine patients that has this procedure has some uh, effect of numbness or weakness in the hand. And 1%, at least in this series, needed revision surgery. We also looked at those patients that had Tommy John surgery where they had the ulnar nerve left alone versus those that had the ulnar nerve transposed, what was the effect on ulnar nerve complications? Well, overall, about 77% of patients that had Tommy John surgery had an ulnar nerve transposition, and the cases where the ulnar nerve was not transposed had a much lower rate of ulnar nerve complications than those with ulnar nerve transposition, a 4% versus 16% complication rate. So a key point that we've uh, raised awareness with this study is patients having Tommy John surgery should not have their ulnar nerve transposed if, if it can be avoided, if they don't have preoperative symptoms. So we'll talk briefly about um, another surgical procedure, elbow arthroscopy. Elbow arthroscopy has been a boon to elbow surgery to allow us to perform surgeries in a more minimally invasive way than traditional open surgeries. We can treat elbow stiffness, tennis elbow, osteoarthritis, loose, elbow, loose uh, bodies in the elbow, but it is a challenging procedure with inherent risks because the spaces are small and the nerves are very close to our arthroscopic portals and our working space. Unfortunately, the orthopedic literature is littered with case reports of complete nerve injuries to any of the three nerves, the ulnar nerve, the median nerve, and the radial nerve as a result of elbow arthroscopy. And these injuries can be the result of direct injury from the instruments, from uh, joint distension and fluid extravasation, or compression caused by the arthroscopic sheets, sheets. And the ulnar nerve is the most vulnerable nerve, but any of the nerves can be injured. So another key point, many of you have helped us in the OR with these procedures. You, you, you know we're very careful about our portal placements. Accurate, careful portal placement is crucial to avoid these uh, injuries that can be seen at the time of surgery. So sometimes injuries aren't immediate. Sometimes they're delayed injuries. So in um, overall, in elbow arthroscopy, the, the biggest series of, um, of uh, cases showed that there was about a 3% rate of transient nerve injuries. As far as delayed nerve injuries, there's something called delayed onset ulnar neuritis after elbow arthroscopy. So when we're treating a stiff elbow with a capsulectomy with an arthroscopic removal of car, scar surgery, patients can develop days or weeks later as problems with their ulnar nerve. And what are the risk factors for those? Well, a, a study showed that patients with a stiff elbow, patients where uh, they had decreased range of motion or had a capsular release, were at an increased risk of delayed onset ulnar neuropathy. And we know that this is a problem because if someone can't bend their elbow, and we suddenly restore the ability to bend the elbow, that puts the ulnar nerve at, on more stretch and creates more problems with compression and tension on the ulnar nerve. So a key point here is in contrast to Tommy John surgery, these are probably cases where we do want to transpose the ulnar nerve. And a number out there is if patients can't bend more than 90 degrees before surgery, they should have an ulnar nerve transposition at the time of arth elbow arthroscopy to avoid nerve complications. I won't bore you with the technical uh, part of this slide, but basically there's a, a very nice cadaveric study done that shows that we can make elbow arthroscopy safer if we really insufflate the elbow joint. So many of you have seen elbow arthroscopies where we put it, about 30 cc's of fluid in the elbow joint, and that moves all of the nerves away from the bone and joint and working space. That in combination with keeping the elbow flexed helps avoid nerve injuries. So we know some ways to minimize the risk of nerve injuries, but how do we treat them if they occur? Well, just a few uh, brief slides. The anatomy of the peripheral nerves, meaning the nerves outside of the spine, shows that there is the outer nerve covering, the epineurium, the uh, nerve covering around the fascicles called the perineurium, and the thin layer around the axons, or the little sort of nerve fibers, the endoneurium. And Nerve injuries have been classified in a variety of ways, but a simple classification, the setting classification, breaks it down into neuropraxias, which are stretch injuries, and these resolve on their own. Axonotmesis, which is when the axons are disrupted, but the outer connective tissue is intact, and these may or may not resolve. And neurotmesis, which is a complete laceration. So let's talk about traumatic nerve injuries. Um, fractures of the elbow have a high rate of nerve injuries. So pediatric elbow fractures, supraconylar elbow fractures, there's about up to a 20% incidence of radial or median nerve injuries. Other pediatric uh, elbow fractures have up to a 40% incidence of nerve injuries. Adult distal humerus fractures, which we treat in the operating room all the time, 
up to 40% will have a radial nerve palsy and will have a wrist drop. The important thing about nerve injuries related to fractures is they generally resolve. These are neuropraxias and they can resolve as early as one to three weeks. So we keep an eye on these. So elbow dislocations, a slightly more significant nerve injury. So adult elbow dislocations have about a 14% rate of an ulnar nerve palsy. Some resolve, some don't. Pediatric elbow fracture dislocations have up to a 60% rate of an injury to the ulnar nerve. So the key thing about elbow dislocations, these are not as benign as fractures. Many of these involve exonotmesis, which may or may not uh, start to recover by six to eight weeks, or complete nerve division, neurotmesis, which will not recover without surgery. And then there are lacerations. So traumatic lacerations with loss of nerve function, these are emergencies. We've got to explore these immediately because recovery of the nerve is really not possible without surgery. So what are our treatment options? Well, in the more benign injuries, um, the neuropraxias, the ones we might see in a fracture, we observe these. We, we look for recovery. If we don't have recovery by four to six weeks, we may consider a nerve study, an EMG or nerve conduction velocity study, and frequently these improve. For the nerve injuries that don't improve, we explore them either early or later, and if the nerve's intact, we can just do what's called a neurolysis. So here's an elbow where a neurolysis was performed of the ulnar nerve and it was freed of sort of compressive tissue and scar tissue. So what if the nerve's completely lacerated? Well then, if we get it acutely and there's no tension on the ends of the nerve, we can actually do what's called an epineural repair. So that first picture of the anatomy of the nerve, if we connect the outer nerve tissue, nerve recovery is possible. You can get sensation and, and strength back and the nerve axons grow about a millimeter a day. So here's a picture of a patient's thumb where we did a digital nerve repair and it was a tension-free repair, so we had the potential to repair it with microsurgical techniques. Um, what if a tension-free repair, free repair is not possible? So as we stretch the nerve, as we elongate the nerve, we, we decrease the potential for recovery. A 15% elongation of the nerve decreases blood flow by 80%. So we, if you can't perform a tension-free repair, we can excise the portion of the injured nerve and use either an autograft, which is an expendable nerve from a patient, or an allograft, which are cadaveric nerves that many of you in the operating room have seen us do for various procedures. So you can see a picture of a, a, nerve, digital, a thumb digital nerve allograft. That's a cadaveric graft and an ulnar nerve allograft as well there uh, of the elbow. So less commonly performed procedure is a nerve transfer. This, these are for higher injuries where the amount of time it would take for recovery would, with just a graft would make it unlikely for recovery. So we can actually transfer um, expendable nerves distally to kind of get more nerve power to do what we call a supercharge or recruit nerve fibers to a non-functioning nerve. Here's an example that's frequently done in the elbow. It's called an ulnar nerve supercharge, where we take an expendable motor nerve to a small muscle in the wrist, and the AIN nerve, and we plug it into the motor nerve of the ulnar nerve to get finger uh, strength back. And then lastly, for chronic injuries, injuries that are a year and a half, two years more, where the, where the nerve potential, the nerve recovery is uh, low, we can do tendon transfers. We can transfer an expendable tendon to a non-functioning tendon and get some uh, recovery of motor. So we'll just close with a case example, but this was a good example treated at Greenwich Hospital that kind of highlights some of these newer techniques. So this was a 24-year-old male that had a laceration to the medial aspect of his elbow about four months prior to seeking uh, real attention. He initially went to another emergency room where his skin was sutured and he wasn't told to seek uh, further treatment. He said that he was told to have the, the staples removed, but he noticed he had no feeling in his pinky and, and ring finger. He had weakness in his hand, his fingers were starting to claw, so he had a laceration of the ulnar nerve, unfortunately, and it was missed. Um, so by the time he came to treatment, uh, we, ex we explored his nerve in the operating room, and here you can see a picture he had a completely divided ulnar nerve, a completely lacerated nerve. So this is a terrible injury if it's not treated, and even if it's treated, it has some limited recovery, but there are things we can do to get useful sensation and motor back. So we found a massive neuroma at the proximal aspect of the laceration and a big gap. So this is one we can't repair. So we performed a nerve graft. We used a cadaveric nerve graft that was matched for size. We used microsurgical suture techniques to 
to connect the graft, to bridge the two ends of the nerve, to allow for axons to cross um, that gap. Um, in addition, we performed a nerve transposition. We moved the nerve to the front of the elbow to take tension off the nerve. And lastly, we also performed a nerve transfer, this supercharged transfer, where we take a, a, a minimally, um, um, a, a nerve that has minimal function at the end of the wrist, the AIN nerve to the pronator, and we plug it into that motor branch of the ulnar nerve to restore strength to the hand. Here's a picture that we actually dissected out in our lab, in the ONS Foundation lab. There's the um, a anterior interosseous nerve, which has minimal importance in the wrist. It can be dissected out and plugged into the motor branch of the ulnar nerve, and it actually does restore strength to the hand over several months. So in summary, what, what have we learned? Well, Tommy John surgery of the elbow is performed with increasing incidence, but unfortunately, it's not a panacea and it's not without risks. Nerve injuries occur even in the most experienced hands up to 12% of cases, maybe even more. And we've learned from our own research that avoiding ulnar nerve transposition decreases the risk. Elbow arthroscopy also puts some nerves in the elbow at the risk, and we've learned that the risk is minimized by careful portal placement, judicious ulnar nerve transposition in a stiff elbow, and also putting fluid in the elbow, insufflation of the elbow capsule. And nerve injuries are unfortunately common after elbow trauma. The nerve injuries that occur after fracture is usually, but not always, resolved. And injuries after fractures, dislocations, and lacerations that don't resolve and may require surgical treatment can benefit from new techniques of nerve repair, grafting, and nerve transfer to offer uh, uh, recovery of sensation and strength in the hand. Thank you.